Greetings, meet my new brother printer. After a few tests that I've done recently, I really wanted to own a laser printer because it's so easy to get a nice printout transferred onto the PCB for etching. This is the brother HL1112. This particular printer A is very inexpensive, so this was um, you, those cost roughly about 50 pounds through eBay and local shops. I got it from local Argos. This printer also has got a separate toner cartridge to the drum, which makes the usage costs a lot lower. But the main reason why I bought this is to do toner transfers. So today let's unbox this thing, hook it up to a computer, and I've made a little test PCB to see how far we can push this. So let's open the box. Proper tool for the job. This is always satisfying. We've got a nicely packaged, we've got a piece of cardboard, something packaged in a very fancy space age packaging, that would be either the drum or the toner. Well, we've got a bag with pictures and a CD, the usual stuff. And that is all. So, three items. The power code is not one of those IEC connectors. It's unusual, the power code goes straight into the casing, it's permanent, so no problem, hook it up to a computer. First though, let's open the Space Age packaging and install the toner and the drum. How is that going in, I guess, that way? I guess that's in. Welcome to my computer station very limited in space but does the trick and here we are in Kai Cut, and this is a very simple schematic it's basically just two 20 pin connectors which have assigned the footprint of a pin header to it and when we look at the PCB of each pair I gave a different class in the design so it begins with 0.05 of a millimeter thickness and clearance then it moves on to 0.1 0.15.2.25 all the way to 0.5 of a millimeter and this PCB should allow us to figure out how far we can push this method uh, I'm just going to print it in default on a piece of paper Ooh. there we go Printer is quick, but printer is noisy. From the printout already I can see that my ambitious uh, attempt to do a 0.05mm is not going to work. Okay, I've printed it again using the fine setting for the print quality and it looks much better. So the 0.05 still is not happening, but 0 0.15, 0 0.2 definitely looks promising. Let's stick a piece of baking paper onto this and see how will this print out and now we're going to print this page again but this time yes we want to do fine graphics over here print yes hello Oh, uh, that didn't work for shit. Okay, I've tried printing on the photo paper, the cheapo photo paper from Poundland, and it worked flawlessly, perfectly, but it doesn't work on the baking paper, like the printer I tried at work, go figure. So, I want to do one more test. With the baking paper, I've gone and sanded the surface of it very lightly. It's a 1200 grit sandpaper. I want to see what, what kind of effect will that make on a print, so let's give this a go. Okay, that worked a lot better, so yeah, as you can see it's there, it's not perfect though. Alright, let's try one more medium, um, this one is a glossy magazine paper. Let's get that stuffed in, press OK, and print, and see what will happen with that. That came out nice-ish. It is unfortunate that the PCB is in the wrong place. Uh, let me move the PCB a little bit. Okay, that's a lot better. Yeah, I think this one looks the most promising to be honest. So, 
Yeah, let's see how will those transfer over onto our PCB. We can choose the best one. Right, so I've got the laminator going for a while and I've cleaned a piece of PCB. Um, let's try. This one seems to be the best looking visually, somewhat. Um, so this is the uh, photo paper printed with fine quality. Let's just stick this on and get some masking tape. And let's stuff it through the laminator a few times and see what happens. I'm tempted to... Oh, it's still quite hot, let me put it one more time. I'm tempted to spray a little bit of water on the paper to help it peel off. I've got a little spray bottle with just pure water. I don't think it will cause any harm to the laminator, but maybe it will help the paper peel off. So... It should soften up the paper somewhat. And check this out. So this did transfer rather pretty. It appears it came off with a layer from uh, from the photo paper, which is interesting. So yeah, this, uh, this will probably aid the resist. Okay, I like this. So this is a good result. This is a very good result. I'm quite happy with that. The clearance between the trucks has to be somewhat bigger because as you can see finest clearance didn't pop out but 0.1 millimeter is showing up already as a clear separation. I'm not sure how will this uh, turn up in etching but as far as the end result I do like this. So let's try a different paper. I'm going to rub this off. Okay the next one fueled by curiosity I'm just going to use the plain white paper that I've printed. There's quite a lot of toner on here. Let's see if that will transfer at all. I've just cleaned the board with acetone from the previous uh, attempt and let's try. And after a few passes I'm also going to give it a, a little bit of water spray. I think that helps the toner to separate from paper. Let's see what will happen. If just normal paper works I'll be amazed. I don't think I'll be able to just peel this one off. We'll find out. Uh, I may have to soak it in some water. There we go, I soaked it for about 2-3 minutes, the paper quickly disintegrated and this is the result. It's surprisingly good, considering that this was just a normal paper. There's still some bits of paper hanging around, but this wouldn't affect anything. Uh, but yeah, even some of the thinner traces are okay, but they do break a lot more, so the photo paper looked a ton better. A lot a lot better but nonetheless this is not a bad result if I was doing uh, you know point uh, three millimeter traces I don't think there's any point of with bothering with anything else other than this uh, the toner sticks to the copper and yeah this will work definitely okay let's clean the board and try another paper here is the magazine paper glossy magazine brochure paper if this works that would be nice because this paper is essentially free it's called junk mail into the laminator and give it a few passes five six passes or so and to give it uh, the same conditions I'm going to spray this with some water too okay that almost peels right off leaving just a thin layer of paper on where the toner was And let's try the baking paper. Now I know this is not going to work out because it didn't even print out correctly. But yeah, why not? Since we've got it, let's try. I wonder if I'll buy a different toner for the printer, i.e. some third-party cheaper replacement cartridge. Well, will it change and will the other toner stick to the baking paper? Because I quite liked the way the baking paper worked. It didn't require soaking. It would just peel off. And there we go, no point soaking this because this paper is waterproof anyways. Oh, hot. Yeah, all the toner left the paper, but the result is not so great as you can see. That's because it, the toner didn't stick enough to the paper initially and yeah. The thicker trucks are okay with a few pittings 
the flood field is horrible with lots of holes in it and the medium to thinner trucks are useless so there you go doing a successful toner transfer onto a PCB has got a lot of variables as I said before and yeah it's the matter of finding the right combination for the printer that you have you need to consider the temperature of the transfer the medium which you're using to transfer ie the papers which is what we've been testing today and yeah uh, try it try out a few different things and find out the one that works best for you for me as it stands I think the best winner was the photo paper this is a poundland photo paper so one pound for ten sheets not too bad I'm just I'm gonna get buy a couple of packs uh, but today let's try one more time I'll print out one more copy and we will actually etch this board and see how will it turn out so here I have printed it again uh, this time not using the entire sheet because it's a waste so um, I've cut out a small piece I have also placed uh, a bunch of random components for no reason other than I want to print it on the back side of the PCB to see um, what if I used it as a silk screen and here it is again I would say the results are quite repeatable with the photo paper as you can see yeah the transfer quality is really really good and it's got that uh, thin coating left uh, that peels off from the photo paper itself I haven't done anything it I just simply peeled off the paper when it was still hot and that seems to seems to do the trick so now I'm going to edge this and see how will it turn out so into the etching bag with the board let the etching begin now I've got a few milliliters just about three milliliters of hydrogen peroxide so I'm just going to carefully add this to the solution now this will make the etching process a lot quicker so let's make sure I seal the bag properly because ferric chloride would make quite a mess that's why I'm doing the etching always in the plastic tub if this bag burst that would have been a disaster and about seven and a half eight minutes in the board is all etched and it's looking good so let's get it all separated remove the board clean it up and here it is after etching and it's looking promising let's get some acetone and remove all the toner from it one last time and we'll test the board how did it actually turn out electrically visually it looks beautiful but of course the most important thing is whether all the connections are going across and whether there are any shorts here is the board close up and here is the board even closer so this is coming from the thickest part of the board thickest trucks and biggest clearances to uh, maybe focus there we go and all the way into the thinnest sorry for the shaky hand I'm just freehanding this shot and as you can see the results are rather good so the first pair is 0.05 millimeter and that didn't work second pair is 0.1 millimeter and that didn't work the third pair is 0.15 millimeter and that visually seems to have seems to have worked so let's see that's first second third pair and yeah it looks like there isn't any shorts in there and the tracks are continuous so let's measure them up so first let's check the continuity between the two pin headers I don't think that's going to be a problem um, but let's see so that's pin 1 that's okay pin 2 pin 3 11 and so on the rest of them I will be fine because the clearances the trucks are rather thick but let's just check it and the last one and they all check out that way 
So, we do have a continuity from one connector to the other across all the connectors. But now the more important, even more important bit, whether there are shorts between. Now I'm going to start from the thicker clearances, just to double check. No, no short. Next one. No short. No short. Now check all of them. It's quite obvious that there aren't any shorts over here. But I just like to keep the suspense going. Nothing. 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 So this is the... Let's have a look. Okay. Nothing here yet. So that's 0.51. 1.5, 2, that's 2.5 mil, uh, 0.25 millimeter, so a quarter of a millimeter thickness of the truck and a quarter of millimeter spacing. Now, quarter of 0.25 to 0.2 spacing, nothing. 0.2 spacing between the trucks, nothing. Okay, 0.15, we've got a short and all the other ones will be shorted. So 0.2 of a millimeter is a comfortable comfortable result. There is no short over here. 0.2 to 0.15 nothing and 0.15 nothing. So 0.2 to 0.15 there there's still no no short. That's because the clearance between the 0.2 to 0.15 is still 0.2. So 0.2 clearance is as far as I can push it. Now I wasn't even really trying hard over here and being extra careful. This just worked and yeah, it's, that just proves it's very repeatable and 0.2 millimeter trucks and spacing I think for a hobby use, for our use here on the channel, that's going to be perfect. One last thing, I almost forgot the silk screen. Now I goofed up a little bit over here because the silk screen in order to toner transfer it from the way it's displayed in KiCad, I would have to um, print a mirror image. So yeah, uh, but that doesn't matter. This is just for a test, just to see whether that will adhere to the PCB and whether it will be visible. Let's see how will it transfer. So again, I'm just using exactly the same method as before. And there it is. Let's see how will it peel off. I did spray it a couple of times with water. Now I don't know whether the water is actually doing anything. That's just something I, I thought of while after I started shooting the video. But I guess it didn't hurt. And et voila. It's a perfect silk screen. I like this a lot. Now because it's pla toner is essentially plastic, it's not... Uh, it's not conductive, so it wouldn't cause a problem. And I've noticed with this uh, photo paper, it actually takes off the shininess of the paper, so that uh, the top cover of the photo paper peels off right with the toner and stays, which I guess helps with the etching a little bit. I'm not sure if I catch the light angle just right. Yeah, there you go. You should see the ghost image of all the components on the of all the, everything that was on the silk screen and that stays on here and if I scratch it the, that shiny bit comes off yeah I can if I try really hard yeah it will come off normal silk screen will come off as well if you scratch it with something metal um, but as far as just rubbing it and just general handling it's not a problem that will work as well. If it, someone tells you that uh, this or the other printer doesn't work with toner etching, tell them to watch this video. Because from what I read online, toner from Brother printers seems to be the worst for toner etching. But as you could see in the initial print where I printed on the baking paper, yes, it didn't work. But just try something else. The key is to find the right medium for your toner, your printer, and then test and see which one works out the best. I've managed even to get a reasonable transfer, it wasn't as pretty as this, but a reasonable one with just plain old paper, uh, just a regular white 
office paper. So if that worked, anything will work. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this extensive test of different media for transferring toner onto the copper on PCB. And I hope you found it informative and it will answer some of your questions if you were wondering how will that or will that not work. Now I know I will be using the photo paper. It seems to give me the most precise results and good up to 0.2 of a millimeter in terms of clearance and track width I've done 0.05 and it's still the track alone is continuous there isn't, there isn't a problem in the track itself it's just the clearance was a problem please make sure to give me a like under the video that really really helps and keeps me motivated to do those random electronics related videos and please do feel free to share and post those, those videos anywhere you wish. For this one that's going to be it. So take care.